In terms of the proposition summary in, of today's or tonight's debate, let's remind ourselves of the motion that I'd forgotten in my first speech. Um, the Koja mother tongue has no future. It does not say the Koja mother tongue cannot have a future, will not have a future, should not have a future, does not have a future. Now, I mentioned a bit about perspective. Picking up the points that the crowd made, and they were very good and pertinent points uh, that were made, picking up from Sukaina's initial point about uh, Iran and, and Persia, uh, the book that Shan mentioned that we both have and we're holding as a Bible, um, the book, obviously, the, the lack of uh, empirical evidence leads the author to, make, to, to, to rely on conjecture, but it's, it's conjecture that you can follow. Because obviously there is no empirical evidence of how much people have fluency and, and what the stats are. We don't conduct in-depth uh, censuses in our community that deal with language, etc. But the conjecture is, is you can follow it. Now, one of the points that, that, that is mentioned within the book, and, and Sean will agree, that there was a community, that Koja community, that migrated to Iran. They do not hold Gujarati in Iran. They have assimilated in society, and all they speak is Persian or Farsi. And again, that is another good example of, well, that is one outcome, and that's a decision that community made. Equally, yes, there is the uh, community that went into uh, the West Indies and West Africa. But equally, what, what we're dealing with is Koja Koja, the, the unique migratory path that our forefathers took from Kutch, coast of East Africa, and then beyond. On, on that point, Finalizing the point of Sukaina is that if we are going to employ resources, because again, there was talk of that from the op uh, opposers, that we need resources, we need to revive something, then are we not at a crossroads where we need to see, is it Arabic, is it Farsi, is it even English? There is that question mark. What is the mother tongue? Is it just Gujarati? Is it a mixture of uh, various languages? Picking up from the point about what, what is spoken in Zanzibar, for those of you that have had the uh, benefit or fortune to, to visit, when you sit at the Baraza in, outside Mamuaro, you hear beautiful Kiswahili. Kiswahili ban. You do not hear, well, you might hear a bit of Gujarati there, but the Zanzibari Kiswahili is just, it's unique. Uh, it's quite uh, sweet, I'd say. So there you go. That perspective on the mother tongue is quite different in Zanzibar as it may be for those of you sitting in the crowd who grew up with English as their mother tongue. But I think... Initially, what has been defined as a Koja mother tongue has a strong Gujarati influence. So we'll have to accept that for the basis of our answering our question tonight, that for what we've debated, Gujarati has to hold a certain uh, uh, weight onto it. Um, coming on to what we need to do, Madrasa, point I touched on. Shan has done a lot of work with the World Federation. The World Federation is currently doing work on the Madrasa Center for Excellence. Where does Gujarati feature amongst it? In our policy making, be it at Jamaat level, be it at Federation level, Gujarati is not being addressed. Yet here we are, passionate people, talking about the revival and keeping the language alive. Well, we need to be looking into our pantries and deciding what are we doing about it. Because as the proposition says, on the current trajectory, you will not have it. A good point made uh, by one of the ladies was, I can speak, bro I can speak in a broken language that, that I can communicate, and it's beneficial. Accept it. I accept that is better to have that than nothing. Equally, her children, her children's children, if you have something broken, how much of a piece will you pass on? Should you not start from a position of strength to then uh, pass it on? I think I'll, I'll have to cut short my summary, but the opposition has used defeatist language. Gujarati ne zinda rakhwan Gujarati ne apre pachholi aave. We have to employ resources, but the pro proposition is not saying leave Gujarati. What we are saying is be factual about it, be rational about it. Look at yourself and see, okay, I will pass it on to my niece, nephew, daughter, son. Will they pass it on? Have I passed on enough? What else should I be doing? There is a GCSE in Gujarati. How many of us tell our children, well, you must take that GCSE because I want you to pass on my tongue that my mother passed on to me. Dad, I want to do German. Dad, I want to do Mandarin. But mashallah. Mashallah to curry. Gujarati? Mm. Um, I, I can speak it. I can speak it and I'm proud of it and I'd like to pass it on to it. But that's a good point, Sajjad. That 
having the desire, having the desire to pass it on does not mean it will materialize. And let us be honest about it. Let us be honest about it. If I could just think about it yeah. That I have the desire, and I do not, design, do not deny that I have the desire, but I also have to accept rationally that it will also depend on my other half, and two, the condition I find myself in. And I fear, I fear that if I am to continue, if the community is to continue on the current trajectory, the motion is put to you, the Koja mother tongue has no future. Thank you.